Hey friends, Valeria here from Chase and Paper. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day today. Today I'm going to show you how to make a junk journal out of a little golden book. Little golden books are great. We all have wonderful memories associated with them. Um, let me show you this junk journal that I made a little while back. This is um, made from a little golden book called The Rabbit's Adventure. And here is how thick it is. There, I kept the front and the back cover. And it has a nice bow closure here on the front. It opens up and it has, it's full of these wonderful pages. And I kept the original story intact. So you can follow along with the story and Along the way, we added some very pretty pages here, plenty of writing space, nice little magazine pages, and we kept the colors kind of, you know, that go together with the cover of this book. So basically, it makes a wonderful journal and you get to honor your book. So maybe you have a little golden book that you remember reading as a child or maybe it's a little golden book that you used to read to your children a lot and maybe your grandchildren and so but now it just sits on the bookshelf and it's neglected and nobody's ever looking at it anymore and it's kind of sad. So I'm going to show you a great way how you can honor that book and transform it into a journal. So the journal could be used in a million different ways. It could be used as a wedding planner, as a daily planner, as a vacation um, notebook, something that you could create great memories in, something to write down your favorite childhood memories maybe. So the uses are endless and I'm going to show you how to honor a book and make a little golden book into a nice little junk journal. So let's roll. So we are going to begin with a little golden book of your choice. If you don't have a little golden book at your house, check out your local yard sales, check out your thrift shops. These books are easily found everywhere and the wonderful thing about them is they're very inexpensive. You could usually pick this up for like a quarter or 50 cents, you know, up to a dollar maybe. We are going to work with the Barbie the Big Splash little golden book because I thought what a great what a great idea to use this little golden book for a summer journal, right? This is a perfect summer theme, reminds me of a vacation and this is what we are going to work with. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to separate the cover of this little golden book from the text block. So this is the text block and this is our cover. Most of the little golden books are constructed in exactly the same way. So you have this wonderful thick chipboard cover and if you look right here on the side this is where the spine is, right? The spine is very thin and underneath this black and gold foil strip they have hidden staples. So one staple, you can kind of see them and feel them. One staple is here and the other one is here. So because we are going to use all the pages from this book and keep the story intact so that the, the recipient on you can follow along with the story and I will show you how to include these pages in. So because we want to save all the book pages, we are going to separate this cover very carefully and gently without ruining the pages inside. So here is how we're going to go about it. So you open your book and you're going to very gently pull, sort of pull this cover off of the spine. So I'm going to grab right here all right, and it comes with experience, but it's not that hard to do. So look, I'm grabbing right here. See, it's kind of opening up for me right there. I'm going to get a good grasp and now take your time and go slowly. And you are just going to pull. You're going to pull and kind of push that spine away from your book pages. 
See how it's already separated? And you can kind of see the staples are right there. So now I'm going to do this on this other side, on the top of my book. I'm just going to gently pull it apart. And see how it's torn right here? That's okay. We're not worrying about that. We're just paying attention right now, basically, to the pages. Pages is what we want to keep intact. There, so I separated as best as I could. Now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to try to do the same in the back. Just like that. And do you see the staple just came off? There it is. A nice old metal staple. So now please be very careful. Do not cut yourself because it does have sharp ends. But here you are. So it's already separated. Now all you have to do is very gently release the remaining um, the remaining book pages from your cover. So now you just kind of have to work on separating the staples. Let me bring you a little closer. You have to separate the staples from the book pages very gently without tearing the pages. So I'm going to try and open them up a little more. You can use a butter knife here, craft knife um, probably is not the best tool for this because we don't want anything very sharp. So I'm using my bone folder instead. So use a bone folder or a butter knife, but something that isn't sharp. So I'm opening up the staples a little more so that I can easily slide my pages out now without damaging my pages themselves. It's a little bit stubborn in this particular book, but it's okay because it still, it still works. There. We released this first set of staples and now the second set. Very gently. Nice and gentle, taking our time. There. And there. It's done. So now. So now what we have is we separated the cover from the pages inside the book. And typically, most of the little golden books I ever worked with have two separate text blocks that are basically stapled inside, okay? But it's always two blocks with several pages in them. Okay, so that's perfect. We can set these pages aside and we can use them later when we're going to be putting our signatures into our journal. I'm putting them aside. Now let's continue working with the cover. So that's great. Our cover is now separated, but now we have to prepare the cover. So first thing you want to do is remove these nasty staples and throw them out, discard it because you don't want to poke yourself with a rusty metal stapler. So I'm throwing that out. And so now you have this cover. We cannot use this cover as is because it's very thin. Okay, so it's not giving us much of uh, room to work with because the journal that we are going to be making will have a one inch spine. One inch between two inches, whatever you like. I'm probably going to make a one inch to one and a half inch spine. We'll decide it as we get closer to that. But now I'm going to bring in my craft knife and my metal ruler. And I'm going to separate the part of the cover, the front cover and the back cover that I'm actually going to use. So in order to do that, I am going to 
Use this craft knife and the metal ruler. There you go. So here is my first cover. And here is my second cover. I'm going to cut with my craft knife. Taking my time here, making a nice straight cut. And it's done. So this part we won't be needing anymore. We can throw that out. So now we are going to create a spine for our new junk journal. Uh, what can we use for a spine? So we're going to use a chipboard right here. And you could use just about any packaging. We're looking for something um, a little thicker than a cereal box. So if you have a cereal box, just double that up. Double up the chipboard so glue two pieces together and it's going to give you a thickness that's just good enough. Uh, one example of what's not to use is uh, corrugated cardboard. Okay, that material is just not strong enough. Um, car what's corrugated cardboard? Think of an um, Amazon box, okay? If you look on the uh, cardboard cut, right, if you kind of look at it from the top, you'll see the, um, the stuff inside. Well, that's something we don't want to use. So I'm going to use this um, a piece from an old head box, actually. I know it's very pretty. We don't care how pretty or not pretty it is because it's going to be covered up anyway. But I'm using it because it gives me just the right thickness. Okay, this is how thick it is. And it's a little bit thicker than a cereal box. So that's perfect. So now I am going to cut a strip out of this cardboard that's going to be about, um, I would say, one inch thick. And it's going to be as tall as my book cover. All right, so I'm going to use this book cover for my measurements, fake measurements, because I'm not going to really do all that much measuring here. So I'm just going to mark right here. This is how tall I want it. And I'm going to kind of use my cutting mat to measure out one inch. So there, there's my one inch. And I'm going to use my paper cutter to cut that strip to get my nice evenly cut one inch spine okay i'm using my marks here and i'm kind of going to cut just a little bit here on the bottom just to cut off that end and double checking right here yep we should be all good let's test it out See if the size fits just right. Make sure that it's tall enough. Not too short, not too tall. Yep, and it looks like we have a perfect match. Can you see it? It's one inch wide. And it's exactly as tall as my little golden book, which, by the way, is um eight inches just about eight inches tall perfect so now we're going to attach this spine to our cover i'm going to use my cotton mat to align all of this so as i'm going to attach the spine let me move you a little bit so you can see it really good i am going to leave about one eighth of an inch or just a little more than one eighth think one eighth or just a hair more right here between the spine and the covers on both sides that's going to give us that gusset that makes sure that you can easily open and close your book all right so now we are going to attach our spine to our book covers and in order to do that I'm going to use this book binding tape 
That's actually the name of the product, book binding tape. I buy mine on Amazon um, and it comes in all different widths and actually it comes in different colors. It could be a little pricey, but honestly, you get so much out of just one roll. I mean, I still, I'm still using this roll and I think I bought it like two years ago. And just pick the type of tape that you like. So this one is a two inch tape and this is white tape. And this one is actually, it's also book binding tape, but this is three inches wide and it's brown. And these are the two that I use and they cover most of my junk journaling needs, depending on how wide I want my spine. This is how I choose which tape I would use. So since I am only making a one inch spine journal, I'm going to use this two inch tape right here. And this tape has a very strong, great hold. Now, if you don't have a book binding tape on hand right now, you can still make this junk journal, don't worry. So what you have to do, you have to use just a regular fabric, okay? Um, if you have an old sheet, bed sheet or a pillowcase, just cut it to size so i would say cut a two inch strip out of this fabric upholstery fabric would also look good and you're going to use fabri tech clear silicone glue right so you're going to apply fabri tech on your surfaces right here right on your boom cover on the edges of your book cover and on your spine itself to make sure that it has a nice, good, strong hold, and then you would apply your cut to size fabric, okay? But I am going to work with this book binding tape. Again, if you don't have it, use a strip of fabric of some sort. So, again, as I said, this tape is really, really sticky. Okay, so I mean, it's so sticky that keep in mind, once it's placed down, it's not going anywhere. You cannot reposition it. You don't even have a second. As soon as it touches something, that's it. That's where it's going to stay and it's stuck. So double check really good. Make sure that your book covers and your spine positioned exactly where you want them. Okay, make sure they don't move and cut a strip of tape that's a bit longer, I would say maybe two inches uh, longer than your book cover. So for an eight inch book cover, you're probably going to need about 10 inches of tape. So I'm right here, I'm just off screen. I am cutting about a 10 inch piece of tape and nobody breathes we are going to place it down very gently and as straight as possible so I'm just going to I'm aiming for the center to make sure that I get the, the same width of tape on the front and on the back of my cover it's not going to be perfect but I'm using my cotton mat, mat here as a guide to help me and there I am placing it down ever so gently. Let's see. There I am tapping it down in place, just patting it down gently like this. And all right, I think we are okay. We are good. Now I am going to flip it over and I am going to fold these ends on the inside right here. Now, as you can see, even though I was aiming for the center, it didn't really work out perfect because I have more coverage on this side than I have on this side. That's okay. We can fix that. We're not going to reposition this tape because like I said, you cannot reposition it. Once it's down, it's down. So even though I could have done a better job with aiming and placing it down, 
instead of staring at my screen and making sure that I was still on screen as I was doing it. <laughs> so I'm going to fix it later and I will show you how. And it's actually all for the best because yeah, sometimes that's what happens and we need to know how to fix this little mistake. So after I place my tape, I'm going to use my bond folder to just kind of glide it back and forth and make sure that my tape is really stuck. Very good. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to cut another piece of tape. This time instead of 10 inches, I'm going to cut about mm, seven and a half inches. I'm not going to measure. All I know that it has to be just a little bit uh, shorter than my spine to put it on the inside. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just eyeballing it. And if it's a little bit too long, I'm just going to cut the end of it off. So there. And you see as I'm placing it here, I'm making sure that I give more coverage on that side that I missed the first time. there and I'm cutting off this extra tape here on the end because it's just a little bit too long so yeah before I stick it down I'm going to cut this piece off there it's all good Again, using my bone folder to make sure that it's nice and flat. There. And it's all good. Now we have a strong spine. It is very strong. It's not going anywhere. Now, instead of using book binding tape, or using fabric with fabric tag glue. Some people like to use Tyvek tape um, or some people actually use different kinds of tape like duct tape. Um, all of those are okay. I find this product to be the best. I sell my junk journals, so I'm only using the best available products on the market. And so just to make sure that it has a nice strong hold that's going to last forever, just about forever, I'm using the book binding tape. But again, give a try to tie back tape or duct tape or use a fabric if you don't have book binding tape on hand. I just like to give you options. So now, as you can see, our spine is nice and strong, but it does not look very attractive on the inside. Well, that's okay because, because we are going to cover it with the fabric of our choice and I chose this fabric I think it goes really well with the colors of the cover and the general theme uh, so in this book Barbie is going to um, I think it's a fictional island that's supposed to be in Hawaii but anyhow so the colors are beautiful and this is like lush almost tropical flowers here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a strip of from this fabric that's going to be about two and a half inches wide. So here is my piece of fabric that I just cut to size. This is exactly two and a half inches wide and eight inches tall. So just as tall as my book cover. And now I'm going to cover up my white book binding tape to make the inside of my journal prettier. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac glue. I actually am going to use a different bottle. It's that very same glue, but this bottle, I just like it better. <laughs> I usually store it upside down and so I get a nicer flow here. So there we go. I am going to apply some glue. And 
and I am going to spread my glue to make sure I don't get any bleed through through my fabric just like that I'm trying to go all the way to the edges but if something doesn't stick that's okay can come back afterwards and add some glue in those places so there I'm putting it right in the middle and I gotta make sure that I'm nice and straight and I am and I'm covering up all my tape on both sides with this glue I still have a few seconds to reposition it if I don't like my initial positioning and that's what I'm doing here I'm just readjusting slightly but there we are all good all right and so now our spine is completely covered and ready and we are ready to work on our signatures now uh, one thing I want to add is that you noticed I only covered our spine on the inside but I didn't do anything to our spine on the outside okay I did not forget about it it's because as we are going to sew our signatures in you are going to have the stitching visible on this side okay so after we stitch our signatures in that's when I'm going to come back in with the another piece of fabric and cover the spine so this way we're not only covering this white book binding tape but we're also going to cover our stitching if you don't want uh, to cover up your stitching and if you want to have what's called an exposed stitching spine then go ahead and cover your spine on the outside now so basically do the same step we just did on the inside do that exact step on the outside cut your strip of fabric flip your book over and glue it down right here all right Again, we're skipping that step for now because I would like to stitch our signatures in first. All right, friends, so this concludes the part one of our video. We completely finished our cover structure. Here it is, all ready for the signatures to be put in and sewn in. So in my part two for this video, I'm going to show you how to use the book pages from the little golden book and how to add choose and add other pages to fill your junk journal and how to sew in your signatures using a three hole pamphlet stitch okay so please stick around for part two i'm going to post that video next week i usually post my videos on friday if you like this please give this video a thumbs up Please subscribe to my channel and please turn on your notifications. Also share this video with a friend. It's really going to help my growing YouTube channel. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you next time.